The two pots. A river carried down in its stream two pots, one made of earthenware and the other of brass. As they floated along on the surface of the stream, the earthen pot said to the brass pot, Pray keep at a distance, and do not come near me, for if you touch me ever so slightly, I shall be broken in pieces, and besides, I by no means wish to come near you. Equals make the best friends. THE GNAT AND THE LION A gnat came and said to a lion, I do not the least fear you, nor are you stronger than I am. For in what does your strength consist? You can scratch with your claws and bite with your teeth. So can a woman in her quarrels. I repeat that I am altogether more powerful than you. And if you doubt it, let us fight and see who will conquer. The gnat, having sounded his horn, fastened itself upon the lion and stung him on the nostrils. The lion, trying to crush him, tore himself with his claws until he punished himself severely. The gnat thus prevailed over the lion, and buzzing about in a song of triumph, flew away. But shortly afterwards he became entangled in the meshes of a cobweb, and was eaten by a spider. He greatly lamented his fate, saying, Woe is me that I, who can wage war successfully with the hugest beasts, should perish myself from this spider. THE WIDOW AND HER LITTLE MAIDENS A widow woman, fond of cleaning, had two little maidens to wait on her. She was in the habit of waking them early in the morning at cockrow. The maidens, being aggrieved by such excessive labor, resolved to kill the cock who roused their mistress so early. When they had done this, they found that they had only prepared for themselves greater troubles, for their mistress, no longer hearing the cock, was unable to tell the time, and so woke them up to their work in the middle of the night. Unlawful acts to escape trials only increase our troubles. THE FOX AND THE LION A fox who had never yet seen a lion, when he fell in with him by a certain chance for the first time in the forest, was so frightened that he was near dying from fear. On his meeting with him for the second time, he was still much alarmed, but not to the same extent as at first. On seeing him the third time, he was so increased in boldness that he went up to him and commenced a familiar conversation with him. Acquaintance softens prejudices. THE TOWN MOUSE AND THE COUNTRY MOUSE A country mouse invited a town mouse, an intimate friend, to pay him a visit and partake of his country fare. As they were on the bare plough lands, eating their wheat stalks and roots pulled up from the hedgerow, the town mouse said to his friend, You live here the life of the ants, while in my house is the horn of plenty. I am surrounded with every luxury, and if you will come with me, as I much wish you would, you shall have an ample share of my dainties. The country mouse was easily persuaded, and returned to town with his friend. On his arrival the town mouse placed before him bread, barley, beans, dried figs, honey, raisins, and, last of all, brought a dainty piece of cheese from a basket. The country mouse, being much delighted at the sight of such good cheer, expressed his satisfaction in warm terms, and lamented his own hard fate. Just as they were beginning to eat, someone opened the door, and they both ran off squeaking as fast as they could, to a hole so narrow that two could only find room in it by squeezing. They had scarcely again begun their repast, when someone else entered to take something out of a cupboard, on which the two mice, more frightened than before, ran away and hid themselves. At last the country mouse, almost famished, thus addressed his friend, Although you have prepared for me so dainty a feast, I must leave you to enjoy it by yourself. 
It is surrounded by too many dangers to please me. Better a little in safety than an abundance surrounded by danger. THE MONKEY AND THE DOLPHIN A sailor bound on a long voyage took with him a monkey to amuse him while on shipboard. As he sailed off the coast of Greece, a violent tempest arose, in which the ship was wrecked and he, his monkey, and all the crew were obliged to swim for their lives. A dolphin saw the monkey contending with the waves, and supposing him to be a man, whom he is always said to befriend, came and placed himself under him to convey him on his back in safety to the shore. When the dolphin arrived with his burden in sight of land not far from Athens, he demanded of the monkey if he were an Athenian, who answered that he was, and that he was descended from one of the noblest families in that city. The dolphin then inquired if he knew Piraeus, the famous harbor of Athens, the monkey supposing that a man was meant, and being obliged to support his previous lie, answered that he knew him very well, and that he was an intimate friend, who would no doubt be very glad to see him. The dolphin, indignant at these falsehoods, dipped the monkey under the water and drowned him. He who once begins to tell falsehoods is obliged to tell others to make them appear true, and sooner or later they will get him into trouble. THE GAMECOCKS AND THE PARTRIDGE A man had two gamecocks in his poultry yard. One day, by chance, he fell in with a tame partridge for sale. He purchased it and brought it home, that it might be reared with his gamecocks. On its being put into the poultry yard, they struck at it and followed it about, so that the partridge was grievously troubled in mind, and supposed that he was thus badly treated because he was a stranger. Not long afterwards he saw the cocks fighting together, and not separating before one had well beaten the other. He then said to himself, I shall no longer distress myself at being struck at by these gamecocks, when I see that they cannot even refrain from quarreling with each other. Strangers should avoid those who quarrel among themselves. THE BOY AND THE NETTLE A boy was stung by a nettle. He ran home and told his mother, saying, Although it pains me so much, I did but touch it ever so gently. That was just it, said his mother, which caused it to sting you. The next time you touch a nettle, grasp it boldly, and it will be soft as silk to your hand, and not in the least hurt you. Whatever you do, do with all your might. THE TRUMPETER TAKEN PRISONER A trumpeter, bravely leading on the soldiers, was captured by the enemy. He cried out to his captors, Pray spare me, and do not take my life without cause or without injury. I have not slain a single man of your troop. I have no arms and carry nothing but this one brass trumpet. That is the very reason for which you should be put to death, they said. For while you do not fight yourself, your loud trumpet stirs up all the other soldiers to battle. He who incites strife is as guilty as they who strive. THE FATAL MARRIAGE The lion, touched with gratitude by the noble procedure of a mouse, and resolving not to be outdone in generosity by any wild beast whatsoever, desired his little deliverer to name his own terms, for that he might depend upon his complying with any proposal he should make. The mouse, fired with ambition at this gracious offer, did not so much consider what was proper for him to ask, as what was in the powers of his prince to grant, and so demanded his princely daughter, the young lioness, in marriage. The lion consented, but when he would have given the royal virgin into his possession, she, like a giddy thing as she was, not minding how she walked, by chance set her paw upon her spouse, who was coming to meet her, and crushed him to pieces. Beware of unequal matches. Alliances prompted by ambition often prove fatal. 
The Ass and the Charger As an ass congratulated a horse on being so ungrudgingly and carefully provided for, while he himself had scarcely enough to eat, nor even that without hard work. But when war broke out, the heavy armed soldier mounted the horse and rushed into the very midst of the enemy, and the horse, being wounded, fell dead on the battlefield. Then the ass, seeing all these things, changed his mind, and commiserated the horse, saying, How much more fortunate am I than a charger! I can remain at home in safety, while he is exposed to all the perils of war. Be not hasty to envy the condition of others. THE VAIN JACKDAW Jupiter determined, it is said, to create a sovereign over the birds, and made a proclamation that on a certain day they should all present themselves before him, when he would choose the most beautiful among them to be king. The jackdaw, knowing his own ugliness, searched through the woods and fields, and collected the feathers which had fallen from the wings of his companions, and stuck them to all parts of his body. When the appointed day arrived, and the birds had assembled before Jupiter, the jackdaw also made his appearance in his many feathered finery. On Jupiter proposing to make him king on account of the beauty of his plumage, the birds indignantly protested, and each plucking from him his own feathers, the jackdaw was again nothing but a jackdaw. Hope not to succeed in borrowed plumes. THE MILKMAID AND HER POT OF MILK A maid was carrying her pail of milk to the farmhouse, when she fell amusing. The money for which this milk will be sold will buy at least three hundred eggs. The eggs, allowing for all mishaps, will produce two hundred and fifty chickens. The chickens will become ready for market when poultry will fetch the highest price, so that, by the end of the year, I shall have money enough to buy a new gown. In this dress I will go to the Christmas junketings, when all the young fellows will propose to me, but I will toss my head and refuse them every one. At this moment she tossed her head in unison with her thoughts, when down fell the milk-pot to the ground, and broke into a hundred pieces, and all her fine schemes perished in a moment. Count not your chickens before they are hatched. THE PLAYFUL ASS An ass climbed up to the roof of a building, and, frisking about there, broke in the tiling. The owner went up after him, and quickly drove him down, beating him severely with a thick wooden cudgel. The ass said, Why, I saw the monkey do this very thing yesterday, and you all laughed heartily, as if it afforded you very great amusement. Those who do not know their right place must be taught it. THE MAN AND THE SATYR A man and a satyr once formed a bond of alliance. On a very cold wintry day, as they talked together, the man put his fingers to his mouth and blew on them. On the satyr inquiring the reason, he told him that he did it to warm his hands. Later on in the day they sat down to eat, the food prepared being quite scalding. The man raised one of his dishes towards his mouth and blew in it. On the satyr again inquiring the reason, he said that he did it to cool the meat. "'I can no longer consider you as a friend,' said the satyr. "'A fellow who with the same breath blows hot and cold I could never trust. A man who talks for both sides is not to be trusted by either. THE OAK AND THE REEDS A very large oak was uprooted by the wind and thrown across a stream. It fell among some reeds which it thus addressed. I wonder how you, who are so light and weak, are not entirely crushed by these strong winds. They replied, You fight and contend with the wind, and consequently you are destroyed while we, on the contrary, bend before the least breath of air, and therefore remain unbroken. Stoop to conquer. 
The Huntsman and the Fisherman A huntsman, returning with his dogs from the field, fell in by chance with a fisherman, bringing home a basket laden with fish. The huntsman wished to have the fish, and their owner expressed an equal longing for the contents of the game-bag. They quickly agreed to exchange the produce of their day's sport. Each was so well pleased with his bargain that they made for some time the same exchange day after day. A neighbor said to them, If you go on in this way, you will soon destroy, by frequent use, the pleasure of your exchange, and each will again wish to retain the fruits of his own sport. Pleasures are heightened by abstinence. THE MOTHER AND THE WOLF A famished wolf was prowling about in the morning in search of food. As he passed the door of a cottage built in the forest, he heard a mother say to her child, Be quiet, or I will throw you out of the window, and the wolf shall eat you. The wolf sat all day waiting at the door. In the evening he heard the same woman fondling her child and saying, he is quiet now, and if the wolf should come, we will kill him. The wolf, hearing these words, went home, gaping with cold and hunger. Be not in haste to believe what is said in anger or thoughtlessness. THE SHEPHERD AND THE WOLF A shepherd once found a young wolf and brought it up, and after a while taught it to steal lambs from the neighboring flocks. The wolf, having shown himself an apt pupil, said to the shepherd, Since you have taught me to steal, you must keep a sharp lookout, or you will lose some of your own flock. The vices we teach may be practiced against us. THE DOVE AND THE CROW A dove, shut up in a cage, was boasting of a large number of the young ones which she had hatched. A crow hearing her said, My good friend, cease from this unreasonable boasting. The larger the number of your family, the greater your cause of sorrow in seeing them shut up in this prison house. To enjoy our blessings, we must have freedom. <laughs>